Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of the Ask Dr. Better series. The following is not meant to substitute professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional help if needed. Donna raises this question. Pastor Betters, I have a niece who converted to the Muslim faith. My parents are older and followers of Christ. On one of my visits, I was told that my niece's husband was in the other room praying to Allah. Was I wrong for telling my parents to be careful of what they allow in their house and what they listen to? You know, as I thought about this question, uh, I thought that, well, you know, on the one hand, we Christians need to be sensitive and respectful to those who do not believe the same way we do. On the other hand, uh, our homes are our homes. Our homes are places where in every corner of our home we are to honor Christ. And that includes what we allow to come into our home and what we forbid from coming into our home. When I was in seminary, Many, many years ago, we had the opportunity to hold daily chapel services. And strangely, we went into a particular chapel service, uh, I remember it vividly, where the Hindus from a local Hindu temple were invited to come and lead the worship service. Now, many of us stood up and protested that, and some of us actually walked out of that worship service. But I'm reminded of a story in Acts chapter 19 that's somewhat humorous. It's, it's uh, somewhat funny when you think about it. I wanna read it to you, and maybe this will help to understand what should have been allowed or not allowed in this particular case uh, as uh, Donna asked the question. It's from uh, Acts chapter 19, beginning with verse 11. And it tells us that God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick, and uh, their diseases left them, and uh, evil spirits came out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches, seven sons of Sceva began to conduct this kind of exorcism. Well, it was Jewish people, Jewish itinerant exorcists were a dime a dozen. They were all over the place. They were, they were there to expel demons from people and invoking the names of angels to do so. Well, they saw the Apostle Paul, they saw what he was doing, that he was using the name of Jesus Christ to bring healing and exorcisms to all kinds of people. So they said, well, this looks pretty good, so we're gonna try it ourselves. What's interesting is what takes place afterwards. Here they are invoking the name of Jesus Christ by doing it just like the Apostle Paul did it. Well, now, what happens next is where it gets somewhat humorous, but also somewhat frightening. It says, uh, the seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish high priest, were doing this, but the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I recognize, but who are you? Imagine that. The demons begin to speak to these Jewish exorcists who are doing something that they thought was valuable for their society, exercising demons from people, but using the name of Jesus Christ because they saw Paul doing it. They said, now, the demons answered and said, well, we know Jesus, we know Paul, but who are you? And then the next verse tells us this. The man in whom the evil spirit dwelt 
leaped on them, mastered all of them, overpowered them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. In other words, the demons jumped out of the man and onto the exorcist because they did not know Christ, but they were invoking the name of Christ. In other words, they were practicing a well thought through, well thought out uh, religion, commonly accepted in their culture. Jewish priests did this all the time, invoking the names of angels to exorcise demons out of people, but they did not know Christ. So the demon jumps out of the man, overpowers them, masters them. That means beat them up. And they, they left, they had to run out of the house naked and wounded. Friends, we need to be careful when we dabble into the cults and other religions when we allow that influence to come into our homes. We expose our homes to invaders. You would never open the door to someone you knew was an invader. Someone you knew was there to do you harm. Islam is a cult. Cult being defined as a religion that has a non-Christian aspect to it in that its leader is not Christ. Scriptures in addition to the Bible which in their particular case, uh, there, are, there are many different scriptures that they adhere to. Islam is a cult. And when you understand that and you open your door, the door of your home to that, uh, you expose yourself to the same kind of demonic oppression that these guys did here in Acts chapter 19. We open ourselves up to all kinds of demonic attacks and oppression when we allow into our homes things and individuals and religions that have absolutely no place there. Your elderly parents have absolutely every right to control what they allow to come into their homes. Respectfully, they should have said to the man who was praying to Allah that is not welcome in our home we hope you will respect the fact that we don't believe what you believe, just as if we came to your home, we would respect what you believe and not practice our Christian faith in the context of your home if you forbade it. Uh, that's just plain old mutual respect. And for this man to go into another room and subject this home to that kind of occult practice is just plain wrong. So you had every responsibility and every right to suggest to your parents uh, that they carefully examine what they allow to take place in their home. I hope this helps.